you the 16th chapter. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you what. Yesterday, I spent all afternoon crawling around in the floor working on kitchen cabinets. <clears throat> and that's hard on an old man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Last night about 11 o'clock or 11.30, boy, I felt like I was just completely beat. Didn't feel like I could hold my head up, I said, Tar, Brother Bill. Yeah. And I thought I'd better read some of the Word before I lay down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, about 40 minutes later, I wasn't feeling tired no more. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 I begin to feel the strength come to me from the... I, I can't explain how that happens, but... My goodness, the strength that you get from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do some of these old deadheads good to get in the Word. Amen. And get some strength out of it. The more I read, the stronger I felt. Hallelujah. Then when I did lay down, I couldn't go to sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. But this is where the Lord took me. And I want to share with you tonight what He shared with me last night. Matthew, the 16th chapter, 13th verse. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You know, He still asks that question today. Amen. Amen. Who do men say that I am? Who, do, who does the world say that I am? And you can talk to many of them and they'll say, Well, He was a great man. Amen. He was a prophet. Amen. Amen. Oh, he was just, uh, you know, some people will say, well, he didn't, didn't ever even exist, although there's more historical proof that he existed than some of the other people we have in our history books that they teach in our schools that they existed, amen? amen. But he still asked the question of man today, who do you say that I am? And you get mixed reactions from that. And they said of that day, they said, well, some say that you're John the Baptist and some say that you're Elias. And others say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he asked him this question that he still asks us today. Amen. Not only does he ask the world this, he asks the church. He says, but whom say ye that I am? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm not, now that I've heard you tell me what the world says about me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to know what you say about me. Amen. He asked that same question today of the church. Who do you say that I am? Amen. Amen. Who do you say that I am? And you would be shocked to believe that some of the church says, well, he was a prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, he was one of the sons of God. No, he was the only begotten son of God. Amen. When they take out those words, only begotten, they, mess, they, they really do some messing with right there. Amen. He wasn't just a son of God. Amen. The Bible doesn't say that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son or that he gave his son. It says he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Jesus Christ was the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. So he asked him, he said, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter, oh, aren't you glad for Peter? My goodness. Simon Peter stuck his hand up in the air as he often did. He said, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know who you are. Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now Peter didn't believe that he was Elias. Peter didn't believe that he was John the Baptist. Peter didn't believe that he was Jeremiah. Peter didn't believe that he was one of the prophets. Peter believed that he was Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, I could preach on that. Amen. See, he was more than a man. Amen. Amen. He was more than a prophet, though he was the greatest prophet ever. Amen. He was more than a preacher, though he was the greatest preacher ever. He was more than a man, even though he was 100% man. Oh yeah, honey, but he was 100% God too. Amen. He was more than a man when he walked along the shores of Galilee. He was more than a man when he looked at blind Bartimaeus and said, receive your sight. He was more than a man when he stood before the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, has come forth and death had to loose his hold and let him come out of the grave. He was more than a man. And Peter knew that he was more than a man. He said, I walk with you. I've talked with you. I've ate with you. I've slept in the same places as 
that you slept. I've stayed in this. I've listened to you preach. I've saw you lay hands on the blind and they walked away sin. I saw you walk past the lame and they got up off the sick bed and walked. I know that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. 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 And Jesus answers and says unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. You're blessed, Simon Peter, because you know this truth. Amen. We're blessed tonight that we know that He was more than a man. Amen. We're blessed tonight that we didn't gather in here tonight in the name of Allah and talk about the prophet Jesus. Amen. We're blessed tonight because we gather together tonight in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. The Christ that Peter knew. Amen. Amen. We're blessed tonight. And he says, Simon, you're blessed because this is a spiritual revelation. This is something that's been revealed to you of my Father. And he goes on to say, and I say unto you, I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. Now Peter's name meant rock. Amen. Amen. If you look it up, that's what it meant. You know, different people's names mean different things and especially had more significance then than it does to us today, you know. We name our kids, you know, Leroy and Gertrude, whatever. Ain't got a whole lot of meaning to the names. Amen. 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 But then there was meaning to their names. Just like Jacob, you know, meant supplanter, meant deceiver, and you see how that took place. See, their name had to do with their nature. Uh -oh. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure what your name means tonight, but more than likely, whenever mama and daddy named you Bertha, Amen, they didn't think, well, you know, this means a great thing. But then it meant more. Today, it probably still, in their culture, still means more than we can really grasp with our mind because, you know, like I said, when we're searching for a baby's name, we just think, well, you know, that sounds good. I like that. It's not so much that people look for something of character or people look at something. You know, some of the names they come up with today, I'm like, well, I never heard that before in my life. And that's what they want it that way. They want something unique. They want something different. Amen? They want something strange. And it's been going on for a long time. Some of our family members, what were them all? There was, there was Willard and Tillard and Billard and Dillard and Millard and all of that, and they finally couldn't rhyme no more with it. And I don't know, they might have called one Frank after that. But anyway, you know, they name them all these names that, that rhyme. I can't even imagine that. I have trouble getting these kids' names straight whenever I, you know, get excited at them or whatever. Much less having a name of Miller, Tillard, Willard, and Dillard and all of that. But then their names missed something. They said, Peter, that's your name. But I want to tell you about a greater rock. Amen? <laughs> you have received a greater revelation of a different rock even though your name means that. See, and this is where the Catholic Church strays amongst all the other strays they have going. But they believe that Jesus meant here that He was talking about Peter. I don't believe that. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed to thee but my Father which is in heaven. And He says, And I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, he wasn't talking about Peter. He was talking about the Christ, the revelation that Peter had, the one the Bible says that the rock that they dropped from in the wilderness was Christ. Amen? He was talking about him, the chief cornerstone. He was talking about the stone that the builder rejected. He said, upon this rock, upon Christ, I will build my church. Oh, I like that old song. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Amen? Hallelujah. Rock of ages cleft for me. Amen. Jesus Christ, the rock. He said, Peter, upon this rock... <clears throat> I will build my church, not upon Peter, but upon Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking and shifting sand. Amen. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why? Because the church is so great. No, that's not got to do with it. It's because of what they're founded on. Amen. You see, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you tonight, Brother Bill, if your foundation is right. 
Amen. If you if you built upon the Christ, the solid rock, Paul said, no other foundation can any man lay other than Christ. Amen. If you build your if you make that your foundation, if that's where your hopes lie, if that's where your faith is founded upon, if that's where your dreams and your plans and your desires are built upon is faith in Christ, you'll be all right. Amen. But we got a whole world that builds on all kind of other foundations. Amen. Amen. But Jesus says to Peter, He says, You're blessed because you know this truth. And I tell you what I'm going to, I'll tell you something else. It's upon this truth, it's upon this, it's upon Christ, it's upon me that I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not overcome it. Many times in the Bible you find that the gates of a city, Brother Beal, were the place where the council met. It was a place where decisions were made. It was a place where court was held. It was a place where business was done. As a matter of fact, Psalm 69 and 12 says, They that sit in the gates speak against me. It didn't mean that they were sitting inside of a wall. It meant that they, the place where they set up council was in the gates of the city. Jesus looks at Peter and He says, The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, shall not overcome it. In Proverbs 1, 20 and 21, it says, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets, she crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words. So this was a place where strategies were talked out. This was a place where court was held. This is a place where decisions were made. And Jesus was saying, listen, every plot that hell can form against you shall not prevail against you. Amen. Every evil and wicked imagination that hell can conjure up and the demons thereof and the devil and all of his crew, they can sit around and plot all they want to. They can sit around and get their strategies all they want to and figure out how they're going to destroy you. But the gates of hell, the council of hell, the decisions of hell, the things of the wrath of hell shall not prevail, shall not overcome the church. Amen. No matter what, the Bible says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amen. 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 We have seen this down through the ages of time. Down through the history, we have seen how the plots of the enemies of God's people has backfired and landed on their head time after time after time. Amen. I got news for Iran tonight. I told you a couple of Sundays ago, I don't believe it was this last Sunday, I think it was two, two Sundays ago, that Iran has started a Bible burning campaign. That so far then they had gathered some 6,000 and something Bibles and they were burning them. Because they said, we've got to stop this Christian influence on our young people. We're losing our teenagers. We're losing their minds to Christianity. And they're pulling them away from atheism and from communism. Well, I got news for Iran and their leaders. Greater nations than you have tried to stop this book and it has not succeeded. Greater rulers than you have tried to stop this book and it has not succeeded. The Catholic Church tried to stop this book and it did not succeed. Amen. They said you don't need it. Just let our let our popes and our and our priests and our bishops let them interpret it for you. But God said, No, I want this in the hands of every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, and I'm gonna preserve it, and I'm gonna protect it, and I'm gonna make sure that it lasts from generation to generation. My word shall not be heaven and earth. Listen, you can burn everybody.